today we're taking a look at these NCAAF matches, which are happening on Friday, September 30th, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Washington vs UCLA. This season, the Huskies are first in the nation in passing offense, with 368.8 yards per game through the air, while they are 66th in rushing offense, with 162 yards per contest. Washington is 12th in the FBS in scoring offense with 44 points per game, and stand 35th in scoring defense by allowing an average of 19 points per contest. Michael Penix Jr. has completed 92 of 143 passes for 1,388 yards, with 12 touchdowns and 1 interception, while adding 26 yards on the ground. Dylan Morris, 4 of 8, 63 yards, and Sam Heward, 2 of 2, 24 yards, have seen limited work as well. Wayne Tolapapa leads the team on the ground with 48 carries for 307 yards and 3 scores this season. Cameron Davis, 35 carries, 157 yards, 4 scores, Richard Newton, 15 carries, 72 yards, and Will Nixon, 16 carries, 67 yards, 2 TD, have had their share of work as well. In the passing game, Jalen McMillan leads the team with 21 receptions for 367 yards and 3 scores this season. Jalen Polk, 13 grabs, 256 yards, 4 TD, Giles Jackson, 13 catches, 175 yards, and Roma Dunza, 18 catches, 293 yards, 2 TD, are all over the 150-yard mark in receiving yards. Peyton Henry has hit all 21 extra points and 7 of 7 field goal attempts, with a long of 47 this season. The Bruins enter this game 30th in the FBS in passing offense, with an average of 287.8 yards per game through the air. UCLA is 17th in the country in rushing offense by averaging 220.5 yards per contest on the ground. The Bruins average 41.8 points per game, which is 20th in the FBS in scoring offense. Meanwhile, UCLA's defense ranks 29th in scoring defense, as they allow an average of 18 points per contest. Dorian Thompson Robinson has completed 80 of 107 passes for 896 yards, with 8 touchdowns and 1 interception. He adds 170 yards and a pair of scores on the ground. Ethan Garbers, 20 of 28, 255 yards, 2 TD, Int, and Chase Griffin, 0 of 1, have seen mop-up duty this season. Zach Charbonnet leads the team on the ground with 43 carries for 293 yards, plus 4 scores this season. Keegan Jones, 40 carries, 178 yards, TD, and TJ Harden, 20 carries, 121 yards, TD, are solid secondary backs in the system. Kazmir Allen, 20 receptions, 152 yards, TD, and Jake Bobo, 15 catches, 221 yards, TD, are the only players for UCLA, with more than 8 grabs. They have spread the ball already, as 10 players have at least 6 receptions so far this year. Nicholas Barmira has booted all 18 extra point attempts and 7 of 9 field goal attempts, with a long of 49 this season. Joseph Firebaugh Jr. has connected on a pair of extra point attempts without attempting a field goal on the year. This one is going to be a major clash to end the month of September and could send ripples through the Pac-12. Both teams have been dominant in the opening month of the season, as Washington's closest margin of victory was 11 points in their win over Michigan State. Meanwhile, while UCLA sputtered to get past South Alabama, their other three wins have come by a combined total of 135-41. UCLA gets a slight edge for being the more balanced offensive attack, but the Huskies have the nation's top passing offense. Washington also boasts a pretty stingy defense, which, coupled with a tougher slate of opponents to open the year, gives them confidence to go on the road. Look for the Huskies to pick up a tough win on the road to run their mark to 5-0 on the season. Our team pick is. Washington Huskies minus 2.5 points. The Huskies are giving up 25 points per game, while the Bruins are allowing 24 points per game in that stretch. The over has hit in four of the previous five games against one another, so go with over 66.5 points in this game as well. New Mexico vs UNLV. 
the UNLV Rebels are playing with confidence. They only have one loss which occurred on the road against California of the Pac-12. They beat North Texas 58-21 in Week 3 and were three-point favorites in a convincing 34-24 road win against Utah State in their MWC opener last week. The Rebels have covered the spread in all four games. The New Mexico Lobos are seeking their first conference victory. They were 17-point dogs in a 31-14 home loss to Boise State in their MWC opener in Week 2. New Mexico easily defeated UDAP of the CUSA in the next one and was labeled huge 32-point dogs in a rough 38-0 road loss against LSU last week. The Lobos have covered the points in two of their four games. The Lobos do not pass often. QB Miles Kendrick has yet to reach 200 passing yards in a game and isn't very mobile either. The senior QB has 426 passing yards, along with a 3-3 TD to int ratio. Nathaniel Jones recorded 83 rushing yards in a win against UTEP. The sophomore RB hasn't generated yards with any consistency, amassing 128 rushing yards on 3.6 yards per rush. Doug Brumfield is very efficient. The sophomore QB has recorded 990 passing yards, accompanied by a stellar 8-1 TD to int ratio, and has added 123 yards on the ground. The Rebels have a stellar running game led by Aiden Robbins. The junior RB had a whopping 227 rushing yards against North Texas and has collected 427 rushing yards on 5.3 yards per carry. Luke Wysong has made at least three receptions in all four games and now leads the team with 14 receptions, resulting in only 104 receiving yards. The New Mexico offense has relied on the running game but has a difficult task against a good rush defense. Their season best output was 27 points against UTEP. The Lobos's defense has been stellar. They posted a shutout in the opener and held UDAP to only 10 points two weeks ago. The defense was exploited by LSU, which was to be expected against the SEC opponent. The pass defense is 85th, while the rush defense is tab 37th. New Mexico is scoring an average of 20.5 points, pegging them 112th. The UNLV offense has scored at least 34 points in three of their four games. The New Mexico Lobos are playing outstanding defense. They held UDAP to only 10 points two weeks ago. Last week was a difficult result, but it was to be expected against SECFO LSU. The Rebels are playing well, no doubt, but this is a large spread for a conference game. Furthermore, the Rebels' offense will run more than pass, and this is ideal for a New Mexico defense that strives against the run. They are limiting opponents to 111 rushing yards per game, ranking them 37th in the FBS in rush defense. Also, I expect the Lobos' offense to break out. They have played against strong defensive teams so far, however, the Rebels' defense can be solved. They have squandered at least 20 points in all four games, which will make covering this large spread difficult. Our total pick is. New Mexico Lobos plus 14.5 points. The Mexico team offense needs help as the Lobos are scoring an average of only 20.5 points per game. Mexico gains an average of 236.8 yards per game, with 129.3 yards rushing and 107.5 yards passing per game. New Mexico is averaging 3.3 yards per carry. New Mexico quarterback Miles Kendrick has 426 yards passing with three touchdowns, but has been intercepted three times. Nathaniel Jones has 128 yards rushing to lead New Mexico, with one touchdown. Jordan Porter has 10 receptions for 146 yards and two touchdowns to let all receivers. The UNLV defense is allowing an average of 23.0 points and 375.3 yards per game. UNLV allows 100.5 yards rushing and 274.8 yards passing per game. Opponents are averaging only 2.8 yards per carry against the Rebels defense. Linebacker Austin Ajiak has 27 tackles to lead UNLV. Lineman Adam Plant Jr. is the leader in quarterback sacks with 2.0, and four players for UNLV have two interceptions apiece, and the Rebels have nine as a team. UNLV is scoring an average of 39.5 points per game, which is 26th in the nation. The Rebels are averaging 439.3 yards per game of total offense, which includes 179.5 yards rushing and 259.8 yards passing per game. UNLV averages 4.6 yards per carry. Quarterback Doug Brumfield has 990 yards passing with eight touchdowns and has been picked off only once. Aiden Robbins has 427 yards rushing and seven touchdowns to lead UNLV in both categories. Ricky White has 19 receptions for 317 yards and three touchdowns to lead all receivers in receptions and yards gained. The total has finished under in six of New Mexico's last seven overall and in each of the last six games that New Mexico has played against a team with a winning record. New Mexico's offense generates only 20.5 points per game, but the Lobos have a better-than-average defense that is allowing an average of only 19.8 points per game. 
the total has finished under in 8 of UNLV's last 11 games following a win straight up. Our total pick is, under 45.5 points.